Here's uh, Randy Williams, Phoenix, Arizona. It's 111 degrees to get today. This is a working shop, so if I start sweating, you know why. So this barn find came in. A uh, customer wants us to see if it's worth fixing uh, or if, he, if we can get it running and then make an estimate on other things that it might need to get a pipeline ready. So I want to go over a few things for anybody that's looking for a machine on how to, you know, check out uh, whether or not the engine needs to be rebuilt, whether or not it's got a bunch of rat's nest in it, whether or not it's got any compression. So the first thing you do when you go out to, the, to see a unit is you want to bust all four of the spark plugs loose and look at each one of the spark plugs to see if there's any oil deposits built up on the spark plugs. If there is, that means that engine's going to have to re be rebuilt. You need to add six grand to whatever you're gonna be buying that unit for to get it to where you can use it. So we're gonna go over some of the stuff that you need to bring out there with you. You need to bring a battery, um, maybe a compression tester, depending on how much this guy wants for it and how much you're gonna get into, you know, seeing whether or not you're gonna keep it or not. Uh, if you wanna zoom in on these spark plugs, so this spark plug here, these two spark plugs I pulled out of a unit that needs to be rebuilt. So you see the calcium build up, barely, probably was hardly even running whatsoever. Now. Here's a spark plug that was running rich. They were trying to get it running, but didn't quite get it to where it was running correctly. This spark plug, you can see the, you know, the porcelain looks pretty decent. Um, you know, it doesn't have any soot built all over it, just a little bit. It's running a little bit rich, but this is this would definitely be a plug that would be um, firing off that cylinder, and the cylinder is probably in decent shape. Um, once you get a little bit further along, you want to be able to test to make sure you've got magneto power. So you can use a spark tester or you can bring a piece, piece of uh, baling wire to put it into, this, into the magneto and then clip it onto the side of the magneto to where it'll make a spark on this end. Uh, if you're going to be welding with it, you can bring a, a DC um, um, a gauge that will test your uh, output, make sure that it, it does have output. And um, carb spray, if the carburetor's not running, you can pull the oil bath off and you can just give it some mist in there and see if it'll kick and try to start. Uh, so if there's things that you do forget to bring, like uh, you know uh, something to check for spark or whatever, you can go this route and see if you can get it to fire off just using carburetor spray. So we're gonna go over a few things on this. We're gonna pull some spark plugs and uh, see if we can uh, actually get this thing up and running. Okay, so just pull number one spark plug. Looking at this, these plugs, this is one thing you also want to look at, is how the spark plugs are. So somebody has been trying to mess with this thing. It's definitely running rich, so he's got some carburetor issues, and it's a brand new spark plug. So you're not really going to see if there's any, any buildup from oil deposits on here. This one's super dry uh, and sooty, so there probably isn't any oil residue or, or whatnot, but um, we're going to do a quick compression on it, and the compression will really tell you a lot. If it's got under 100 pounds, uh, it, it's probably going to have issues running. If it has around 150, that's almost like a brand new engine. Now, if it has been sitting for a long time, don't really worry a whole bunch about the compression because you might have two cylinders that have 130, 150 pounds and two other cylinders that have either 25 or 30 pounds or whatnot because those two cylinders, you have one intake valve that's open and one exhaust valve that's open and they might have been open for four or five years. So those, uh, as the um, intake and exhaust valve are, are coming down and, and making contact, they're allowing some of the compression to seep past it. As this unit gets up and running and it starts beating all that uh, buildup or rust uh, uh, build up or whatnot, usually they'll come up and, and meet the same compression that the other two cylinders have. So don't really worry about that if the unit's been sitting for a long time. So, whenever you're installing a battery, the first, when you're disconnecting a battery, negative comes off first. You try to take the positive off first, you can spark and cause a problem with the alternator uh, breaking out the diode in the alternator. Uh, whenever you put a battery on, you want to put the positive on first and then the negative last. That way you won't get any spark. So, rule of thumb is negative off first when you're pulling the battery out, positive on, on 
on first when you're installing the battery. Seventy pounds. Let's try it one more time. So I won't bore you with going through all four of them, but I didn't see any issues with that particular one. I would say by the fuel lines and whatnot that it's got, you know, it doesn't have uh, good fuel in it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check to see if the magneto is working. So I'm gonna put a spark tester, pick up at like Harbor Freight, and I'm gonna see if it's got a spark. That way I know the mag's got some output. and make good contact and see if it has output. All right, so now we're gonna fire it up and we're gonna see if it's got uh, output at the weld lugs. So usually where we start at is we had a rheostat at 100%. Uh, and we're looking for somewhere in the 80s or 90s on startup probably want around you know 70 I mean about 97 and then as it warms up after you've welded with it then it'll drop into hopefully a sweet spot which would be around you know 88 89 or so for downhill pipe so let's get this let's see if we can get it fired up before we can check it
lucky on this one. It actually is probably going to be uh, pretty good to go through and uh, put electronic low idle and a remote on it and uh, steam clean it, tighten all the nuts and bolts and uh, see if you can go out and make some money with it.